Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. We've got a cracked piston. We've just finished cutting it. We're going to open it up and have a look inside. Hey people, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. We're going to take a look at a cracked piston here. I'm about to uh, cut it the rest of the way and we'll have a look inside, see what's going on. But I thought you might find it interesting. I've got the gudgeon pin out just to show you. Um, you can see the crack. You know, this is an old piston. It's been sitting on the bench for a while here. You can see the oh, crack across the top like always. And... Um, you know where it actually blows through that's when it starts running bad when all the compression whoosh, straight through but now that the, the pins out of the way you have a look at the heat right in the middle of the piston as well so just think about that has heat got anything to do with it you know just have a think about that for a while and the other thing is um heat and do you think i'm not telling you anything i'm just telling you to have a think about it and just think about it common sense uncommon sense whatever See the crack right over the gudgeon pin. Do you think force on the piston has got anything to do with it? So remember, there's a whole lot of explosions going on at this end, forcing the piston down. So we can agree, definitely, it's a fact that the piston gets forced down. So if there's more force on the piston, would that fatigue and damage the piston sooner rather than later? I don't know. I think the answer is pretty obvious, isn't it? Uh, and I just want to say, remaps, tunes, whatever, more torque, more power, more torque, to do that means more force on the piston, right? And there you go. Anyway, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to, for this piston, what I'm going to do, I thought it'd be interesting to cut it this away, so then you can see through it that away. But for this one, what I'm going to do, because it obviously it seems like it's cracked through the whole thing. I haven't bothered cutting a piston in half before. I'm just going to cut the rest of the way through these and uh, then we'll open it up and have a look inside. So stick around, subscribe, turn the bell on. We might have some more videos on cracked pistons and other stuff soon too. Bada bing. I'll just cut through one side with the grinder. Probably took about a minute or two. Just with a small, I've got a 115 mil grinder um, with a flat blade on it. I was contemplating using the reciprocating saw because originally I was going to do it with a hacksaw. <laughs> This ain't an engineering workshop. Not a bad cut. Yeah, just with the old Ryobi Plus One. Yeah, I've been onto them for a while since they were blue. And this isn't an ad for Ryobi, but I'll revise what I said actually, because it only took a couple of minutes with the old, very old 1.4 amp hour battery. Um, you know, but when I put this five amp hour on, which is a lot new, I think 2020 it says on the bottom there. Um, Heaps more grunt. So all these tools, they got a lot more grunt with a bigger battery. I would have thought it's just how long the battery lasts, but no, more juice means it gives it a bit more power as well. There it is. The cuts are complete. So once we take it out of the vice, it's probably going to fall in too. Meet you back over at the bench. All right, we've got it cut. So let's uh, open it up and everybody can go, because everyone's waiting. Dun, 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 dun. We need the suspense music, right? Anyway, we haven't got time for that. Right, there it is. There's your crack piss and opened up. Probably no surprise there. What might be interesting is if I uh, cut it that way and we get to have a look at the material in there, right? So there you go. I'm sure this has got to be interesting for people. So I'll get in there. Any metallurgists out there and all the experts, uh, let us know in the comments what the findings are. Just allow you to have a really good look at it. I'm going to contemplate it for a minute myself. Plenty of material there. But once a crack starts, it seems to just continue, doesn't it? Now, do you see what I mean? We know the cracks start from up here at these corners here. I wouldn't really say they're that sharp or anything like that. Um, but my point is, these cracks and the fatigue through the piston, it doesn't just happen like that. It happens slowly over time. This is why it's important to uh, make sure it's well documented by Toyota that injectors wrong combustion is what cracks the pistons so make sure you don't have the wrong combustion keep the genuine toyota tune no chips no remaps and make sure you replace your injectors before they're causing wrong combustion and remembering from 2009 the 150 the software is really awesome in the 150 pradas and the hiluxes even the hiluxes are still noisy anyway even with new injectors but you know commercial vehicle that hasn't got the insulation but you know let's just use the pradas for example the point is it keeps it quiet in the 150 Prados between the software and the, uh, you know, the insulation. You kind of can't hear a thing when they're running right. And even when they start not working right, often you don't really hear anything. So just checking out my sharp edges there. 
Anyway, don't ask me any questions. Subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll have a look at it again in the in another video perhaps or perhaps in previous videos there's a crack piston playlist there's a free engines playlist anyway um, i think that'll make a good thumbnail so we'll just go we'll call this one inside a crack piston all right guys thanks for watching subscribe turn the bell on hope you found that interesting and what i might do when i get some time is cut it the other way and let's just have a look what's going on through the piston looking at it the other way it could be interesting